So, rigging grease pencil, huh? So that it would change its shape depending on a bone location? Alright, let's do this. Well, for this tutorial I will use rig of my own eyes as an example. I will have to warn you that rigging grease pencil stuff this way might not be the fastest method, and it's quite complex and probably hard to understand, but I didn't find many tutorials on this type of rig, so I decided to still make one. First, draw your object and every single version of it. For example, for the eyes, I drew every single emotion I'd use and every eyelid location I'd use to represent my emotions. Next up, the main key to connect all those different shapes into one controllable object is this geometry node setup. First, I'll explain exactly what it does since it's important, to then understand your rig, and then how to make it. Basically, when you plug objects into this node group, and then change the value, the object will switch to their corresponding value. Like, if you plug cube into 1, sphere to 2, and pyramid to 3, then switching value to 1 will make the cube appear, switching to 2, sphere, and switching to 3 would make a pyramid. And if we apply the same logic to this eye, that's what's happening. Now, let's make this node. If you don't want to make this node from scratch and just want the node, you can get it from Gumroad for like, I don't know, a dollar. But I'm gonna explain it for free anyway, so you don't have to pay anything unless you're really lazy. So, this node basically takes all the geometry you plug in and shows only one object at a time, right? So it works by basically deleting all the other objects, except the one we want to see. Okay, let's add the geometry node then. This node deletes the geometry if the number given into it is 1, or doesn't delete anything if the number is 0. Put this node into instance mode, since grease pencil objects are not geometry, and geometry nodes can only work with them as instances. Now, let's add math node and put it into compare mode. Set the second value to 1, and plug the integer node into the first value. If the integer value is 1, the compare node will output 1. If the integer value is something that is not 1, the compare node will output 0. Now plug the compare node into the delete geometry node. Ok, let's add a random stroke or a random object into our geometry nodes window. Also don't forget to uh, check as instance check mark, because our delete geometry node is in instance mode. So, the idea of the setup is that if value equals 1, the object should not be deleted and should be visible. If value equals something else, the object should be deleted. But right now we have the exact opposite. If value is 1, the object is invisible. If value is not 1, the object is visible. Which means that we have to invert the compare node. Take a boolean math node and switch it to not. It will turn 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. Now we have the desired result. So those three nodes are the main node chain we will need. Select all those three nodes and press Ctrl J to put them all in a frame for convenience. And duplicate this node chain like 10 times, each time editing the second value of each compare node to plus one from the previous one. Now plug all the output geometries into the joint geometry group, select them all and press Ctrl G to make them into one node group. And plug every single top value in compare node into the group input. Also I recommend changing value from float to integer and also setting minimum and maximum from 1 to 10. Now plug the input geometry node from every daily geometry into a separate node on the group input. Rename those from 1 to 10 so that you can later understand which node the value belongs to. Here is how an entire thing should look like. If everything is done correctly, when you plug some random geometry into 1, 2, 3 or any other input node and then change the value, the geometry should change to this value. Also, it is important to check the checkmark as instance on object info when you drag and drop objects into the geometry nodes window, since every single delete geometry is in instance mode. Also, I recommend plugging the value input of your newly created node into the group input node. Now you can change it from the modifiers tab. 
All right, now we have this weird node that changes geometry when we change the value. How to rig something with it? Well, with drivers. I will show you how I have rigged ice with this node. From now on, I will refer to this node as a geometry switcher. First, I have added geometry switcher for only brow height, which means I have added geometry switching node. And then first I drag and dropped all the versions of brow height I had, and then I plugged those into one, two and three. Now when I change it from one to three, uh, the brow height changes. Then I have duplicated this geometry switcher two more times. But for those, I changed the input geometry to the same, but with a higher positioned eyelid for each one. Then I plugged it all into a separate, another one, geometry switcher. One, two and three. Now it is important to connect all of those three geometry nodes into a one value. Let's plug it all into a group input. I will call it brow height and then I will plug this one and call it eyelid height. Now if I change the brow height, I change the brow height. If I change eyelid height, I change eyelid height. All right, now let's add emotions. Now all the stuff is going to get real, real quick. So let's just add it all to uh, separate frames so that we will understand what's going on a little bit better. Now we are duplicating it two more times. Now we are changing every single input geometry to the same geometry, but different emotions. I'm also connecting the brow height into the one value everything every brow height is in one value every eyelid height is another value now we we add another geometry switcher node and this one is going to be a geometry switcher for the emotions we are inputting first one second one and third one and we are plugging the value right here and changing it to emotion. Now if we change the brow height, the brow height changes. If we change the eyelid height, the eyelid height changes. And if we change the emotion, the emotion changes. I will try to explain what's going on so that you could use this node to recreate this sort of rig or something else using this technique. Basically, what is going on is that when we change the value of emotion, it chooses between one of those three folders. Let's say those are folders. It chooses one of those three. When I choose one, it chooses the higher one. If I choose two, it chooses the second one. And if I choose three, it chooses the third one. Now, when we chose the third one, when we choose the eyelid height, it chooses one of those three. For example, if I choose one, it chooses the first one, if I choose two, it chooses the second one, and if I choose three, it chooses the third one. And then, when I choose brow height value, which is this one, it chooses first or second or third. One is one, two is two, three and th is three. Therefore, when we choose three, 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 this node chooses, chooses the third folder, this node chooses the third folder again, and this node chooses the third folder here. Now that we have done it, it is actually very easy to understand that it is going to get exponentially harder the more variations you are going to add. This one is only like 27 variation of the eye, and if there were more, there would be more of this. So this is a very huge flaw in this type of rig. Since now we can control it all with changing a value, it is very easy to control with drivers and bones. Let's add an armature for our eye. We will add this bone to control eyebrow, this bone to control eyelid, and this bone to control emotions. Let's rename those appropriately. Now we are adding a driver to the brow height. As an object, we are going to use our armature. And as a bone, we are going to use brow. 
we are going to use its Z location. And as you can see, it has changed to 3. This is because the value is a 2.5 and it's converting it to 3. And let's change it from the world space to local space. All right, we can see that when we change the Y value, it changes the brow height, which means that we are going to use not Y val, not Z location, but X location. All right, now if we change the location of the bone real, really much, we are getting this. Now we should make it so that we don't have to move the bone like 500 kilometers down so that the brow height changes. We should, it should be normal. So var is basically a variable that is returning the output of the X location in local space of this bone. Right now it outputs zero because in the local space for this bone, this bone on the coordinate zero, zero. Let's add plus one. Now it outputs, no, let's multiply the variable 50 times no, and then add one. Now, yeah, now it is way more sensitive because we multiplied it 50 times. And instead of outputting, for example, 0 0.5, 0 0.005, it outputs 50 times more. Now, as you can see, if we uh, change the bone location too much, it just removes the eye completely. This is because of how this node works. To limit this, we are going to use this expression. It, it makes it one minimum and three maximum. Now we should pass the, our expression right here. And now we limit our value from one to three. And as you can see, we can move our bone really a lot and uh, it wouldn't make our eye disappear. Now let's add the same thing for the eyelid height. We are choosing our armature. We are using eyelid and x location in local space now as you can see when we move our bone down the eyelid goes up we we need completely opposite of it so we're going to use minus variable and let's multiply it by 50 again and as you can see it works i'm going to warn you that options i choose in this tutorial might not work for you you will have to experiment like for example change the type from x location to y location to z location change local space to transform to world until it works change the expression sometimes you will have to go like some python stuff with math expressions like for example well minimum and maximum limitation for the value now i have just used this minimum and maximum expression again and now it works with this bone. And now let's add one for emotion. I want it so that when bone goes down, brow goes down. And when bone goes up, brow goes up. Now let's add driver, add a driver, armature. Let's do plus one, X location in local space. I think that for the eyebrow, we can just use the same expression as in brow height, like exactly the same. Let's try this. Oh, no, we have to invert it. And I think it should be plus two because I want it so that it would be a neutral, neutral expression. All right, I don't like how sensitive it is. So let's do, let's by 10, let's multiply it by 10. And so, yeah, we now have the rig for this eye. This was the hardest part. Now that now let's make it as fancy as it is here. Like uh, this fancy um, scales. Scales are also done via drivers. I just added a driver for Z and change it and use it the bone for scale that depend on the location of this bone. This is a bone, by the way. This is a bone. Now to make it all fancy like that, we will use an add-on called bone widget. Using this add-on, if you go to rigging tab and you can choose any of the pre-made bone widgets that exist and just hit create and the bone will change to this shape. Or you can create a custom bone shape, let's just make it. Now if you go to viewport display, we can use custom object. And as you can see, the bone changed to this custom object. You can also delete this custom object if you don't want it anymore. And change its scale, translation, rotation, how, however you want to make it. 
and it's still a bone that we used. Now, with this knowledge and this node at your disposal, you can rig any grease pencil object. Maybe you will be able to make it easier, so it's not getting exponentially harder every time you want to add a new shape to your grease pencil. And with that, the tutorial is over. I wish you a good luck creating your awesome animations, 3D models, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This would mean a lot to me. Goodbye.